I've been painting for about two and a half weeks right now. Painting in a truck camper while you're still kind of living in it has been a little bit harder than I was expected. I should know this. I should know this. But, uh, you know, sometimes you, you get in your mind that things are going to be so much easier. So I started out with uh, bathroom painting, trying to do piece by piece because honestly I have to move crap from one section to another portion of the truck camper. And you know, you don't have a lot of room, so one room at a time is really all you can do. Well I sanded everything down. I couldn't find a tacky cloth, which would have been really nice, but I'm using isopropyl alcohol along with um, a towel just to kind of clean off the the dust from me sanding. I don't know. I don't know if that's going to even work. I'm trying to smooth out the areas that had uh, gaps between the pieces of wood. Uh, it'd be nice to make it look like its own piece of wood, but I don't know if that'll work. So I finally figured out what paint I was going to be using for the cabinets. And I wanted to make sure something that's going to stick well on the laminate cabinets. I ended up using the PPG primer that I had used on the wallpaper, or used two coats of that. And then I decided to go with Sherwin-Williams Emerald Urethane Trim Panel. That's supposed to have kind of like a bridge between like oil-based paints and latex. It does have some self-leveling, which is really good. I was worried about the color. I wanted very light, but not white white. So I ended up going with the pearl white. Uh, that seemed to have a little bit of brown and black in there. I'll show you what I got. So I don't know if you could really tell, but this is the white white from the primer and this is the pearl white, so just a smidge off. Since we are still going to be doing the light tans and browns in the camper. Well, I'm lucky enough to be able to use this shed while we're here at Gary's parents. They just bought this thing, so it's empty, which really makes a great place for us to work on our cabinets. I started off with some of the bathroom doors. I'm gonna close that, because that is so bright. It's all nice and quiet in here now. Let's see if I can turn on the lights. Yeah, there we go. It's never gonna be perfect if you're gonna be going over laminate, but I think this is pretty good. Again, I use the PPG primer, the same primer that I used on the walls in our camper. Used two coats of that, sanded in between, and then used this Sherwin-Williams urethane uh, trim. Uh, I hate using tape, but I felt like I should with the mirrors. I guess I'll need a razor blade to get some of that off again. So this is a satin sheen, and I'm thinking that looks pretty decent. There's a tiny bit of a pattern there. Not too bad. The next step is for me to sand and prime the cabinets in the living room. Up until now I've been using just a hand sander on some of these, but I'm wondering if on the actual wood it would be better to use an orbital sander. My goal here is just to try to get this sheen off. That would cause it to not adhere well to the primer. Certainly doesn't like that. I'll be the friend that is standing there. I'll be the hand holding all your care. Great. I'm working on my stuff, and Gary is working on his stuff. 
So we're going to clean these off with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. Nothing real exciting about painting these. I just paint the inside to get those corners and then use the roller for the rest. First coat does not go on smooth, partly because I'm using a crappy brush, but also because it's primer. I keep things in plastic wrap in between the coats so the paint doesn't start solidifying. I do have little pieces of tape here, I forgot to mention. That says underneath it which cabinet it is, just to help me when I'm putting things back. And it's right underneath the hinge so you won't see that dark spot. Then rinse and repeat for the rest of your stuff. Uh, and then let it dry for a couple of hours. Well, still painting again. I have a couple of coats done on the bathroom and working on the living room now. Painting in the living room is a little bit more challenging, trying to not get paint on the carpeting there, but since the dinette is butted up against it, not that easy. I'm sure I'm going to have some challenges there. Kind of messy right now, honestly though. are looking better. I really am glad that I'm doing this. Uh, again, I'm still a little nervous about how easy it is going to be to keep clean and, and how much touch-up I'm going to be doing, but I did buy some, some place in this soiree of crap I have. I bought some, some paint bottles so I'll be able to keep some of the primer, cabinet paint, and even some of the wall paint in there just to have for touch-ups because um, crap happens. I will say that if we weren't stationary for at least a month, I would not even consider tackling this project. But it has been taking a lot of time. It's been cold, which takes longer to dry. It's been rainy like it is today, which takes longer to dry. So in reality, things have been taking me between two and three days to paint the inside. And on cabinets, you gotta paint both sides. So it's been taking me four to five days to get cabinets done in the shed. Pink, 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 pink. Which was the one I really liked? A little shorty. Paintbrushes are expensive. How to get lost in Home Depot 101. It's models. Oh, crap. I don't even know what store I'm in. Protective dots? No. Yeah, I think. Those will work. Yep. On the track hair. No, I don't have any of that. Noise. Yay.
In our bathroom cabinet, we ended up adding some switches, some electrical switches that allow us to have light in here when the door is open. One of the additional things we have to do is adjust this to not only grab the door, but to make sure that the electrical uh, switch here is turning off correctly. So I'm going to fake it by doing this. Huh. And surprisingly, that turned out um, spot on. I got these from Lowe's this morning. That keeps it nice and firm in there. I think that looks all right. I definitely have a little bit of work to do around these edges. Uh, I don't think they look as good as I'd like them to, partly because I ended up using that tape. So I'm going to have to get a little tiny brush and clean that up. But, you know, if you look at it from the three foot view, um, that's not too bad. You know it's time to stop your painting project when you're putting hardware on the wrong way. Lovely. You know, there are some upgrades that you do on your camper that you think in your brain that it's going to be awesome and then it really isn't. This is not one of those. It is gloomy outside here in North Carolina and I'm just going to show you the difference. I only have a small portion done but I think you couldn't understand why I have done this. And please excuse the mess. Obviously, I'm working quite a bit in here, but you can see this is the left-hand side of the camper, the way it is. And then you can kind of wander over here. And doesn't that have such a different feel than this? I love this camper, I love the layout, but I am so glad I decided to go through the pain and suffering of changing the cabinets to white, white-ish. Not having white cabinets before, my biggest fear is that everything looks dirty all the time because smudges. You, you kind of see that on stainless steel stuff. You're constantly seeing fingerprints, which is quite annoying, um, but I'm trying to deal with it. Do you have white cabinets? Have you had any problems or are you really happy with what you've done, whether it's in your RV or your home? Let me know in the comments. One of the concerns that I had when starting to paint was how do I deal with the laminate stuff that really doesn't look good? Uh, what I found so far, and again, this is just me doing this as well as reading, is if I sand this down and then um, add some wood filler to this, it looks pretty darn good. So again, it's not going to look perfect because you're still going to have all these gaps in here. It's not going to look like a solid piece of wood, that kind of thing. But so far, not too bad. Well, painting definitely does make you relook at things as you're going through. I've got a lot of the items off of our center console. One of the things that we're doing is to move our thermostat down. We've noticed that if we are using the TV, the temperature of the TV will dramatically impact your thermostat. And since we were completely redoing this area, this seemed like the right time to do it. I'm working on uh, fixing this little hole. I threw a piece of wood in there um, and had, that, had this screwed in for a little while, added some wood glue on there just until it's dried. Now I'm gonna go over this with some wood putty and hopefully we can make this look like there wasn't a hole at all. If you ever wanted to see the insides of a host cascade center console area where all the electronics are and the fireplace, I got you covered. Here is the top panel. I have this removed with the four screws on the edges. Host has this fuse block here um, that I've pulled out with four screws. It also came with the standard porch light, light switches in there. Uh, I added the sea level monitor a while back because it is much better to figure out your values on your tanks. Victron 
uh, monitor. I don't think I really use it too much, but needed that. I had that because I bought a shunt, which is in an electronics video somewhere. Our rig came with the Onan generator, so that's the panel. I added a Serbo GX touch after the fact and got rid of the stock Zamp solar connector. Host comes down with a bunch of wires to handle the TV, which is typically mounted here with all these, this thing with a bunch of screws. I added, of course, wiring. Um, if you know me, I added tons of stuff in here, um, but this is for our cellular router that goes there. Some of these are for a camera system that we have, but uh, it's kind of expensive, so we haven't talked about it. As far as the lower portion goes, I ended up removing the heater. It's actually here because it's cold here. Um, so I wanted to keep the heater going. So the stock host comes with the radio receiver that runs the speakers throughout the camper and outside. Um, they just came with two panels on ours, but we ended up adding some remote slide switches. And this is a little rocker switch for the fans that we added below. I believe Host is adding those after the, you know, later now, um, but on our rig, we didn't. So we didn't have them. So we ended up drilling some holes that go down into the basement. I think this one goes down this one comes up, so we're getting some circulation there when the fans are on. We also put this one on the side, again, to try to get more air down into the, um, the basement. We drilled some holes here and a hole over here, again, to try to get some of that circulation. But there's a lot of room in here if you didn't have the fireplace, which we love and we're not going to get rid of. The top of our fireplace had this on. I think in newer models, they have a quick removal. Ours was literally screwed in from the bottom, so we had to remove the radio in order to get to it. But this is where you can easily get to your hot and cold water um, for the shower. Well, we're obviously still not done yet, but we're making some serious progress and more paint on my clothes. Eh, oh well. Before closing this video, I wanted to at least show you some of the progress that we've done, at least on the center console. I am pretty happy with this. I'm still not done. I don't know whether I'm going to put the uh, the cabinet on there or not. I'm still debating about it, but we're always in there. I don't know whether it really makes sense to have that cabinet, but it does look cleaner when on the few times that we have it closed. Have you guys removed that at all on any of your coast campers? I would really be interested to know. I really should have used something there to make that better. I don't want to caulk it because we tend to remove that panel. This might be the one reason why we end up putting that piece on there just because it looks not finished and I'm not thrilled with that. Again, you know, this is painting with, uh, with a brush and over laminate. So you are going to get a little bit of the paint, paint brushes. I probably could have done a better job there, but still a pretty good shape. I think I tried to move a lot of our wiring a little bit below that what I had before, which kind of gives that a slightly cleaner view. Getting down on the floor here, this is what it looks like um, when it's all finished. I ended up going with some higher wattage charging and ended up replacing the 12 volts since we basically use USB stuff right now. Those seem to be working well. We have a similar one in the bedroom. Uh, but I think they're both USB A's in the bedroom. This has a USB C and a USB A on there. And uh, those are our remote switches. And again, this was that switch that turns the fan on um, below the fireplace, those three fans that I had shown you before, but you can listen to them. They're so quiet. I'm gonna turn it on. That's the noise. Off. They're so nice and quiet. You wouldn't notice them on at all, which is why we ended up getting one with an LED, which is nice because sometimes we forget that it's on. As far as my charging station, this 
changed quite a bit. Let me see if I can get a flashlight. I am really loving the modification that I made in this little nook here. Uh, we have the Starlink router here still, which is, you know, it's just where we have to put it. I have it with a little bit of a, an extension cord that I can get to a little bit easier. That allows me to unplug it when we're off grid. Our inverter has all of our outlets being powered when we have it on. And sometimes I want to have that on, but our, our Starlink off. So that router does take a little bit of juice. So if I'm not using it, I don't want to have it on. But one of the coolest things that I found was trying to get all of my stuff powered when I'm off grid. I was using a big 110 power strip down here. And now I'm using a bunch of these little 12 volt chargers. Why not use 12 volts since that's pretty much what's in our campers anyway, right? That's power, you know, reducing our power loss by doing that. And I do have a lot of electronics here for the channel, but uh, this really makes it easier to charge things just by plugging those in. The one negative I would say for these pieces up there is that um, there's some doors that you have to open up in order to put those cords in. They're a lot stronger than they should be. So I'm just leaving the cords in there. They'll dangle nicely. And then I'll just choose one uh, as I need to power it or unplug it as needed. There are some power, some switches in the middle that you can turn on and off as well. That gives us a, another ability to turn those things off when we're off grid only powering things when we need to. I purposely put them up a little bit farther just so they're not as visible. So you do have to kind of get down here to turn them on and off, but um, I'm trying to make this usable, but as clean as possible. You come back here, it looks fairly clean. That is one of the reasons why I left all of that dark in there is to basically mute the uh, charging stuff. We normally will have an extension rod uh, across there, but since the paint is new, I did not want to put those on for the for a good month as the paint is curing. The paint actually is takes 30 full days to cure, so I'm being gentle until then. Well, thanks for sticking around and watching this painting saga. We are almost done painting. And we've got some interesting surprises coming then. If you saw our list, you kind of have an idea. Until then, we will catch you on the next rework or upgrade trail. Talk to you later.